Hello again, uh, this is Jim Pierce, one of your selectmen. Uh, this is the third in a series of five presentations under the title of Sandwich by the Numbers. I'm going to again try to stick to the data, not offer any opinions or suggest any solutions. Uh, if I should happen to slip up and offer an opinion, it's my opinion and mine only. It does not reflect the opinion of the collected board of selectmen or anyone else in town government, for that matter. The uh, entire series of presentations, by the time you're viewing this, there will be three of them that are already up on uh, Facebook and on SCTV. Uh, again, sticking to the data, as few opinions as possible. Uh, the uh, written material will be in the Sandwich Enterprise and it will be posted on sandwichschoolnews.com. The sandwichschoolnews.com posting will include links to the sources of whatever data is used. This third presentation is under the title of the school budget. Now the school budget makes up about two thirds of the expenditures for the town of Sandwich. Uh, if you saw part two, uh, the dealing with the potential use of expenditures per citizen as a, an efficiency metric. Uh, for the town of Sandwich, our most expensive and arguably most valuable citizens are our school children. And uh, we spend a significant amount of our budget doing as we should, educating them, and educating them quite well, according to a couple of national magazines. I have had uh, many people approach me and start discussions with some version of the school budget is out of control. Well, let's see what the numbers say. Uh, the graphic is the school budget. The vertical scale is in tens of millions of dollars, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. The uh, horizontal scale is uh, years, the, la the last four fiscal years, and the projected budget for the next fiscal year, <coughs> FY 2013. The uh, blue portion at the bottom of the, bars, of the bars in the bar graph is the part of the school budget that comes directly out of your pocket and mine. It's the local contribution to the school budget. Uh, in FY09, it was $23.2 million. For the three years in between, it's varied up and down a bit, but always sort of around $23 million in some change. Big change, of course, when you're talking that decimal point is hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, <clears throat> The projected local contribution to the school budget for FY13 is $23.25 million. That's up $50,000 on a base of $23 million over the course of five years. You can translate that into a percentage. I think it's something like two-tenths of a percent. Uh, the uh, yellow portion of the bars is the Chapter 70 contribution which doesn't come directly out of your pocket and mine, it comes indirectly out of your pocket and mine by way of the State House. Uh, in FY09, about $6.9 million was contributed through Chapter 70. The number held at $6.9 million in FY 2010 and dropped a little bit to 6.8 in FY11. And then in uh, FY12, the state was on hard times and they cut it down to 6.4, where it stayed for FY13. Now the little red bit up at the top of the last two columns is how the school system compensated for the decrease in Chapter 70 funding without increasing local contribution. Uh, in FY11, the federal government enacted the Jobs Act. It was in, intended to save the jobs of 
teachers and firefighters and police officers. Uh, we were okay, Sandwich was okay in FY11, so the school system didn't spend that money in FY11, and they were allowed to carry it over into FY12. And it was that $435,000, I think was the actual number, that is represented by that little red speck up at the top of the column there. Now, the jobs grant money was gone at the end of FY12, so how did the school system compensate for the decrease in Chapter 70 funding? So, school choice funds was one part of that uh, little red block at the top there. Uh, some bus fees and uh, additional athletic fees were proposed as another potential way to compensate for the drop in Chapter 70 funding. And there was a supplemental budget uh, submitted which added another 130000 So the, uh, the red block, again, has been compensated for by dipping into school choice funds, by the fact that the state actually upped the Chapter 70 by 130000 and the proposal, and I'm not sure how the school committee is going to proceed with this, to add some additional fees. That's what the numbers say. The school budget has essentially been flat for five years. Now, we all know that the uh, decline in enrollment has been a fact over those five years. Uh, some federal inflation index indices will tell you inflation has gone down. Uh, draw your own conclusion based on what you know about enrollment and what you know about inflation, and, and uh, ask yourself whether a flat school budget over five years is rational or not. That's it. That is the numbers as far as the school budget is concerned. And uh, there is one other thing, if you look down at the bottom of the chat, there's uh, an efficiency measure for, uh, for school systems as well. Uh, it's just uh, how many dollars do you spend per student educated? And for Sandwich, that number is $11,333, or at least I, th I think that was the 2009-10 number. Uh, the data table behind these presentations has that number for all the rest of the 17 towns. Again, those 17 being 15 Cape Towns, Plymouth, and Wareham. And Sandwich spends the least per student. Uh, you can make your own subjective judgment as to the quality of education in Sandwich, but a couple of national magazines have said we are top notch in that department. And we spend less than any of those other, or any of the total of 17 towns in the data package behind this particular presentation. I'll leave it there for part three.